What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I am back with some more sync content to bring to you. Now today it's going to be a project that I've had in the works for probably the best part of a week, almost close to two weeks, and this is going to be looking at the TTK kind of meta when it comes to the competitive side, the Nerva runs when inside of synced. Now what I wanted to be able to do with this video, what I was hoping to achieve is be able to go through every single one of the guns, be able to get their damage values, be able to then put it into some TTK kind of charts, and then I'll be able to show you which are the most competitive weapons, which have the fastest TTK TTKs and which are completely broken that you should probably be abusing when it comes to Nerva runs. In this video I'll be discussing what I've managed to do with my testing, what I've managed to be able to put together and then be able to show you all those charts right at the end and discuss and summarise what I've managed to achieve. If you do enjoy this type of content, if you want to see more from us when it comes to Synced, we'll be covering both PvE as well as PvP content going forward, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel for more Synced content. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's start getting into this video. Alright then, so what I've managed to do is I've managed to grab all the weapon data that I possibly could from being able to go into the VR training. Feel free to be able to do this yourself. All you need to be able to do is head over to the VR training section right next to Leia and all you need to do is just head into there, head to the nano range. This will take you over into a separate place after you've completed a short tutorial if, you've only, if you haven't accessed this before. And then once you've pushed past the, uh, the nanos that are just kind of like sitting there, you can then over on the left hand side you have a fairly kind of like bog standard kind of shooting range to be able to use, but on the left hand side if you want to, you can shoot this over to runners. Uh, this allows you to go back and forth between PvE as well as PvP threats, so you can get the damage numbers for yourself and feel free to be able to test them. Don't don't have to take my number, my, my method or my numbers for this. If you want to go test it yourself, feel free. That's exactly how I did it, and that is how I've managed to put all these figures together. Now from this range I was able to get an idea as to how much damage we were able to do, I was able to get like test it for in terms of like range properties, I was able to put it all together in terms of like armour, everything like that, and this is all kind of like the calculations that as you can currently see on the screen. So the idea was that over on the left I'd be able to get some range properties, I'd then be able to take individual pieces of damage. Uh, when it comes to shotguns though it's a little bit different, we'll cover that very very shortly, uh, but once I've managed to populate all of this as you can kind of see, uh, and then over on the right hand side I'd be able to put some kind of like uh, stats together some numbers and then from there be able to figure out the times to kill in milliseconds and then from there take that information put it all together put it into a spreadsheet so that I can then have a look as a chart. Now I did mention shotguns specifically because shotguns are very very different. They're, they're the only ones that fire multiple projectiles at the same time. Now every single one of the shotguns in this category, uh, as it currently stands anyway, uh, all fire 10 uh, projectiles when they're shot. So you do have 10 pellets. Each one of these pellets is going to be doing, for example, at 10 meters to the body. It's going to be doing 6 damage. But if I hit to the head at 10 meters, each one of those projectiles or those pellets will do 8 points of damage. So you can see why I've got two different uh, categories here. So I've so that all 10 land and then that gives me the idea of the body count and then when it comes to weak points it also gives me that. This from this I'll uh, be able to figure out all the HP values so every single piece of armor that you do go on so every single time you increase your rarity you're adding an additional 10 points of hit points so you go from 100 HP at base, uh, got a grey rarity is uh, going to be an extra 10 Blue is, is 20, uh, purple is 30, and then gold is going to give you 40. So that is the maximum amount of hit points that you're going to have. Uh, so I've managed to use that to get an idea as to how, time to get a shot, how many shots to kill. Use the RPM, uh, so I've managed to do that hand tested, and then that gives me, it pops out the uh, milliseconds time to kill for me. So I can see how competitive they are once I stack them against other weapons. Now we'll do a quick scroll through on this one so you can just get an idea that I have populated all of this. Uh, the only one that I haven't done was pistols because pistols was a bit of a pain, uh, mainly because every single time the uh, the weapons over on the left hand side they kept spawning with suppressors. And as we know suppressors do actually reduce the amount of damage that our bullets will be doing. Uh, so I, I highly recommend staying away from suppressors in of themselves. But as you can see every single damage range that I need to is just basically on here. And then once you get to a certain point or when it gets to a point where I can't test it anymore then that just pretty much where it stops where it is. So you can see here, um, and then this is a separate section. We'll come back to that very shortly after I've just shown you all this. Uh, but you can see every single weapon is pretty much in there. I do have a section for ADS time, but uh, it's not really relevant considering you can aim over the shoulder as well as do aim down sight. Um, so I haven't really kind of considered that into it just yet. But as you can see, LMGs, fairly simple. These are just pretty consistent across the board. And then lastly, we've got the sniper rifle category. 
and there you go that is everything now one thing to can um, to kind of like confirm before we go any further is that there have been a few questions around if weapon rarity in pvp increases the amount of damage that you do to runners now in the past we were advised that this wasn't going to be the case uh, we were told that it was specifically just against pve threats and we've been working with that information for the best part of one to two years now um, so it, we, we were quite surprised to find out that once we've got the shooting range that actually it does seem to increase the amount of damage that you do to runners so in this case while you, it does mention on the shop or when you go into your weapon rarity it does mention that it's a five percent damage increase every single time you increase it it actually doesn't work out to be that uh, at least not in the training section anyway uh, and that's the reason why i have this point down here so what i did was i took in one for the I took in the future uh, i took it in as a gray rarity and then i grabbed the legendary version that's in the uh, in the in the firing range wall and then I put it against each other and I managed to get the, the damage numbers. Now, as you can see here, the RPM was the exact same. That's not going to change. Uh, in terms of like body damage, for example, at 10 meters, this is the closest you can get to a target. Uh, this was going to be seven points of damage. And then on a weak point, it was 13. Now, you can see that we do have a higher damage number on these. So all these damage numbers that are going to be with the gray background have been taken with the gold rarity in mind. So it may be a slight less kind of like tier in terms of like how many, uh, like how many points of damage you'll deal with a gray, uh, gray rarity but as you can see we do one point more damage once we upgrade all the way to gold and the same again once we hit the head so it's not a huge amount uh, i believe once we calculated this across every single category it's around about seven and a half percent so you kind of get half the benefit as to what you would have been doing if it was against pve threats and the best way to be able to show this one as well is going to be with the sniper rifle category uh, as you can see here with the dragoon uh, with gray rarity we were doing 49 to the body 98 to the head and if you get this gold you do actually go to 53 damage to the body and 106 to a weak point now you'll also notice that this is a like where it gets a little bit strange because uh, over as you increase you'll be doing more damage and you'll start meeting certain thresholds so if, for example with this uh, with the dragoon rifle because we've increased it over the 50 points of damage to the body we're able to get that two times met head multiplier and that means that we're able to instantly down 100 hp enemies so that's something that you do need to factor in with some of these guns it's going to be most of like it's going to only really apply to those with uh, high base damage uh, because the multiplier will be offering you a little bit more than something that has only hits for like three or four for example so uh, in the case of sniper rifles it is kind of important that you do upgrade those as far as, as high as you can uh, but once again most of the time it's not really factoring in too much into the amount of damage you'll be doing uh, so i still stand by my side when it came to the pvp guide that uh, weapon rarity should be the last thing that you upgrade when it comes to it you should always upgrade your armor first you should then always look to be able to go grab some like upgrades for your nano or uh, anything else like that uh, maybe get something out of the exchange like for example some stun mods if you're running a crusher or something for your guardian if you're if you're running that one and then from there then look to be able to increase the amount of weapon rarity that you have so you deal that increased amount of damage so that's just to cover a few caveats that's just something that i wanted to give you a little bit of information before we go any further so now let's start diving into the main nitty-gritty about it let's start actually going into what is actually the best kind of gun and then see how they all can kind of compare for themselves so if we head on over to our charts yeah, you can see all the data is up here what i've done it is a per meter basis uh, because some of these don't have the exact same damage fall off so they would go in like stupid numbers like 82 83 uh, some were falling off at 20. Is it? it was just all over the place. So what I did was I manually went through all this. I managed to put in all the TTK values to try and get this as accurate as possible. And then this is what it spat out to me. So you'll be, if you're looking at this a little bit, you'll be kind of overwhelmed uh, just with all the extra lines on here. There's a few things to really take away from this. This is just purely the 100 HP body shot TTK. And if we scroll across, I've done it as 120, 140. So we'll, we'll, we'll scroll across those in a second. The main thing that kind of like sticks out straight away is this line right here. Uh, this line right here is the baller SMG. Now, this is widely received as one of the best SMGs that is in the whole community. Uh, in terms of like the whole game, everyone recommends the baller when it comes to it because it just has an insane amount of it. It just feels great. It has an insane time to kill. And now we've got the bit of evidence to be able to back this up. The baller is literally the best kind of gun to use in uh, in close range quarters when it comes to like firefights. Uh, there is only one thing that really kind of beats out that you could potentially use, uh, and these are going to be shotguns. But once again, these are not flexible in the way they use, and they are very reliant on you being able to land every single one of those pellets, which in some cases is not going to be fair, like reasonably possible whatsoever. 
Now looking at this line, and it is the exact same if we go across a little bit, you'll see that this purple kind of maroonish kind of line is always beating out everything all the way up to a certain point. And that's true for around about up to around about 29, 30 meters. Uh, the bullet is the fastest killing gun uh, looking at body shots. Uh, to be able to like uh, just destroy runners in front of you. If you're looking for close range, like close quarters combat, the baller is going to be the one that you would uh, you would use. Uh, the closest thing that we do have to it is actually the bully, which is quite surprising, uh, because the bully has a really high kind of uh, magazine size. It has a uh, quite high uh, rate of fire as well. I think it's the fastest in its own class. The only downside to the bully is that it doesn't stretch as far as uh, the, as the baller, because once you hit to around about 20 odd meters, uh, this will instantly fall off, and it is insane as to how much this just drops off as you can see it just stretches and then becomes the second worst gun uh, at multiple ranges uh, just from being able to look at that kind of category it's kind of crazy as to how that falls off it's not the worst in the category because that belongs to the happy camper uh, i would recommend that you stay away from the happy camper in, as an smg it's just not worth picking up because as soon as you start falling off it falls off badly it's yeah it's, it's just the worst smg or worst automatic gun of all time so definitely do not use that one uh, but yeah, so if you are looking for a, an SMG that's going to help you out, uh, definitely the baller. Second place, I'd probably say the bully. Bully is pretty good. Like I said, you should be using an SMG to challenge all the way up to around about 20 odd meters anyway. After that, you're probably stretching it a bit too far. Uh, so it just kind of falls off around about the right time. And then lastly, we've also got this straight orange line that's here, which is the heavy hitter LMG. Now, the heavy hitter is actually a very competitive gun to use. Uh, this is, like I said, this is just considering 100 HP. Uh, but the heavy hitter is just pretty good. Like I said, it just goes across all the way in terms of range properties it's one of the best guns in the whole game and it's just insanely consistent so you're just going to always have the exact same time to kill all the way across depending on like not even counting range which is kind of crazy the only thing that affects it is obviously once you start factoring in armor but once again as you can see if we scroll off a little bit more you can see that it always at some point becomes the fastest killing gun to go for when it comes to body shots so what else can we pick out from this what else are kind of like a couple of nice notable kind of like interactions what can we have a look at well we do have the old reliable we do also have the higher power the higher power is a statistically worse lmg compared to the heavy hitter so if you were to use an lmg it would have to be the heavy hitter you wouldn't recommend the higher power uh, but then we also have the old reliable as you can see this line is straight across all the way until like almost the very end uh, to like as about as far away as possible that i could test this and it's just a really consistent feeling ar it's got low recoil uh, it's got a pretty good fast reload uh, it's it's kind of competitive up close it's not the best you will get absolutely decimated by smgs but it can still get the job done uh, but it is insanely good once you start getting into mid-range and then like i said that low recoil is going to help you out and that they'll just help you to start landing some of those weak point hits so that pretty much wraps it up when it comes to the 100 HP. So let's start moving across. And you'll notice the exact same thing as we start scrolling. Uh, so I didn't want to do it as increments of 10 HP because I just didn't think it was worth it. So instead, we're going straight up to blue armor. And like I said, you can find the exact same stats just pretty much here. You've just got the baller. Uh, so if I click into here, we've got the baller uh, in terms of like the fastest killing. We've got the bully. Uh, we've now got the enforcer just keeping up up to around about 19, 20 meters. Uh, so it's an okay SMG. It's just kind of... Cut like just falls off really hard uh, same again with like with the bully just once you get to a certain point it just kind of gets decimated which is a bit of a shame especially since we have the vicious cycle skin and that would encourage me to use that skin a little bit more if it actually had a little bit more range and it's pushed out a little bit here but hopefully that's something that gets addressed in the future uh once again lmg heavy hitter is just keeping up the old reliable is there uh we have the higher power we have the future as well future's a really good ar it's kind of a very consistent uh it does have worse range properties compared to the old reliable uh, but it is once again one of those low recoil ars it's what it's the first gun that you have unlocked the old reliable lock unlocks much later on uh, so you can definitely rely on the future and you can then start using that split ender skin if you do go into the pve side of things it's a lot of fun to be able to mess about with uh, so you do have some really nice options here the space skelet is okay i suppose uh, up to around a certain point and then it just kind of falls off a little bit more the only problem with the space cadet is kind of like how the recoil works how the bullet velocity feels it's just not a nice feeling gun if you're trying to fire it on range it's it's supposed to be an ar smg hybrid and it just feels too much like an smg except the smgs feel more consistent on range it's weird i'm not entirely sure how it kind of works like that but it is what it is uh, so i i'm not personally a fan of the space cadet but i can see why some people would be and then lastly, if we scoot on over to the legendary armor, you can see how this one kind of works. Uh, once again, because we've got the uh, we've got the bully uh, or the baller, 
once again, they're some of the best. The Enforcer actually beats out the Bully uh, up to a certain point once we hit max, uh, max armor. So that's one thing that does actually change a little bit depending on how much uh, armor we do have. So that's something that you could potentially factor in if you wanted to. Space Cadets, once again, in there. We also have the Classic. The Classic is insanely consistent. Uh, if you have a look at the orange line, you can kind of see that it doesn't really move too much. It's actually fairly consistent across all types of HP, uh, but it is fairly consistent in staying in there, in staying in that pack in, th in this main kind of cluster. The only thing that holds the Classic back is the insane kind of recoil. It just kind of jumps all over the place, but we'll be touching on the Classic very, very shortly, so just keep that in the back of your mind as to, uh, like I've just mentioned, that AR, but you can see everything else here. Uh, like I said, if you're looking at this kind of section here, SMGs, it's just not worth looking at, but over here, the close range kind of meta, the baller is just pretty much the best, and it just it kind of stays there, unfortunately. So that's our body shot time to kill. So what does it look like if we're able to start landing those headshots? How does this all kind of change? Does it mean that the baller is actually still the best SMG? Well, for all of you, yeah, unfortunately it kind of does. Now, it's not as clear cut compared to everything else and still until we start adding in some armor at which point then it does actually become a little bit more clearer but as you can see when it comes to the 100 hp weak point time to kill what is absolutely insane and absolutely baffles me is this the classic time to kill this is crazy being able to keep up with the bully uh, just like uh, sorry not the, not the bully being able to keep up with the baller all the way up to around about 23 24 meters is crazy and the fact that it can keep this time to kill all the way out to around about 82 meters is just baffling this is a really good gun to be able to start using if you're able to control that recoil even in close quarters you can keep that really nice time to kill and you'd be able to surprise some people with the baller if you're able to do that so the classic is a really nice gun if you're able to learn it if you're able to master it i probably recommend giving this a go and actually start using it because you can actually use this as a close range option if you're able to land all those close range headshots other things of note though, like I said, we actually start seeing some ARs start to beat out the SMGs. Like for example, the bully is all the way up here now, which is kind of crazy. So it, you, you're not rewarded as much for being able to land those headshots. But what you will find is something like the Space Cadet is actually in there as well. Uh, so as a close range meta weapon in terms of like being able to keep up with like headshots and everything like that, Space Cadet's not actually a bad shout. If you want to use it as like a miniature kind of like SMG that has a better range profile, then the Space Cadet's actually a decent shout. So you can go around with that. Uh, we do also have the old reliable in here we also have the future just kind of keeping up here uh, so you can see some really nice times to kill right about here uh, and then once again we've just got our very consistent kind of uh, lmgs they fall off a little bit when it comes to uh headshots which is a bit of a shame uh, but once again they just kind of keep that consistency going they're just pretty much there and you can definitely get away with using them now once we start adding some armor into the mix it becomes a little bit more kind of clear that the uh, the baller is just pretty much reigning supreme once again so as we just kind of see this, yeah, it's just kind of crazy once again. I, I do think that the baller is just kind of too oppressive in its current state. It just has the best body shot time to kill. It has the best headshot time to kill. It just needs something that kind of has a drawback because as it currently stands, it has a really good mag capacity, really fast tire uh, fire rate. It has a really fast uh, reload time. It's just kind of crazy as to what this can kind of do. Uh, but we also have the bully. The bully is kind of keeping up once again, but then does then tend to then drop off quite hard. Uh, we've got the classic. We've got the future that's also in there right there as well uh, we have the space cadet we have old reliable overall same kind of choices over and over again as you can kind of see and this is pretty much the same once we go all the way up to our legendary armor as well so as you can see uh, we're going for the baller uh, space cadets keeping up once again we have the old reliable mixed in there we have the classic we have the enforcer and we have the space cadet as well so you can see there's some really nice options there uh, but what does this actually tell us what does it tell us in terms of like the best guns to be able to use well smgs are absolutely god tier in close range with two of the four being insanely strong and the other two being either mediocre or just god awful to be able to use the ARs, though, are a bit of a mixed bag, with some of them being good, some being okay, and some being god tier if you can land those important headshots. And if you can enjoy those mid-range firefights, this probably would be the category for you to start watching. But DMRs, though, are completely broken as it currently stands. And the reason why I haven't put these on this, on this chart is because, one, they're supposed to be used at this kind of range anyway, but two, because it's not comparable. The reason why is because when we got the uh, high kind of like base damage, 
as you can see here, uh, and same there. You can see the time to kill values here. Every single one of these is competitive. Uh, but the main reason why we use these is because they're a per, like per point of, like bullet points of damage. Uh, they do some insane damage. They have some insane kind of range potential as well. Uh, only starting to fall off around about 105 kind of meters. Uh, but also because the recoil is very manageable, they're very spammable. Uh, it's just some insane amount of damage. There's not a lot of guns in this game that can kind of keep up with the DMR, especially seeing as they have the scopes as well, and you can't really get those on any of the automatics. Now, if we were to have a look at the two DMRs that people pretty much use when it comes to range, a lot of people do gravitate towards the Wyvern, which is quite surprising to me because statistically the distant relative is actually the better one. Um, they have the exact same rate of fires, the distant relative has better damage profiles, and this does actually mean that we have less sh shots to kill, depending on where we are actually landing it and depending on armor and everything like that, but the distant relative, in theory, is actually the better DMR. So why do people go for the Wyvern? Well, actually it's to do with the attachments. The reason why is because the distant relative comes with a bunch of things. It comes with different types of scopes, going from 2 to 3 to 4 to 6, uh, and then we also have like magazine attachments and everything like that. The Wyvern is very simple. If you're able to find a floor loot version of the Wyvern, it will literally come with a 4x scope and that is it. You are set up, you don't have to worry about anything else. Whereas the Distant Relative can come with that very short range scope, it can come with a long range scope, it comes with a bunch of things and you just have that inconsistency, meaning you have to try and take this one in with you rather than being able to have your SMG of choice. So a lot of the pro players will actually kind of go and forego one of these points of damage. They'll go with the lower base damage in of itself just to be able to have that consistency of being able to have that scope. And that's probably the main reason why people go. They go for the consistency side of things. So uh, both are really good shouts. If you find either, you'll be absolutely fine. You'll be in for a good time. Uh, but most people, like I said, they do look for a floor loot wyvern to be able to complement their close range gun of choice. So what happens with the LMGs? Well, these are the picture of consistency when looking at damage across range. Are they the most competitive to use? Probably not, but are they great for suppressing fire and still finding a way to be lethal in the right hands? They definitely are. You're able to put a lot of damage down range. You can start absolutely peppering some people with their guardian shields. You can start putting, forcing people to be able to keep their heads down because you don't want to get pop your head up into any LMG fire because you will instantly get deleted with it. It's, it's, it's quite crazy as to how much damage an LMG can start putting down range. So if you do like that kind of team play and something like that, feel free to take in an LMG. Uh, but uh, out of the two, it's going to have to be the heavy hitter, I think. I, I, the higher power just isn't worth it. You have a more competitive time to kill with the heavy hitter. So if you're going for one, I'd recommend that one. Lastly, let's talk about the shotguns because these are in a bit of a weird place as it currently stands. Uh, the, so let's head over to that section again so you can kind of have a look. Uh, as you can see, like the pig nose, it's just got lower base damage because it has a faster rate of fire, so you're able to put more shells down range. The close talker is your pump action shotgun. It does have a way of being able to do a one pump shot kill, uh, especially all the way up to grey armour, which is quite nice to be able to see, but you do need to land all of your pellets onto the head. Uh, and then the all timer has got a really good rate of fire, but only has those two shells, and that's all you have, and then you have to worry about a reload. Keeping that in mind though, it is insane consistent because you're able to get if you're able to land every single one of your pellets you'll be able to have a two shot kill uh, regardless of if you hit the body or if you hit the head I'd recommend going for center mass it just gives you more chance to be able to land all those pellets but that is a really quick time to kill uh, like I say it's just very punishing if you do miss those shots and uh, you don't get enough damage you then have to put in one of those reloads which is a bit of a shame one tip that I will give you though is that if you do actually go for a shotgun, I would recommend going for a dead cut. The reason why is if you do grab an old timer uh, and then start and go around the field, being able to have dead cut so you have fire affliction on your last shot in every single one of your magazines means that one of your two shells is going to have that fire affliction, doing a little bit of damage over time. And if you don't manage to land enough of those pellets to be able to get that down, then the fire affliction has a chance of being able to do it for you. So where does that place the meta? Well, it's currently hard to suggest anything other than your choice of DMR and the baller. The baller has your close range fights down to a T, and the DMR will help you with anything you shouldn't be using an SMG to be able to challenge. Other rough bit of meta kind of picks I would probably say would involve the bully SMG, the classic, the future, and the space cadet ARs, especially if you can get over the space cadets kind of strange recoil and bullet velocity issues.
But that pretty much wraps up everything on this video. I hope you've managed to see the charts. Let me know in the comment section down below because this is like my first time being able to uh, cover like time to kill across multiple kind of armors, everything like that. Uh, I'm trying to base it as closely as I can on what we see with someone like J-God doing things for Call of Duty Warzone, etc. Um, so if you think there's a better format I can try than show this off to you in, uh, then let me know that down in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to get this, uh, this data published to as many people as I can. Uh, so just feel free to just give me that shout. But let me know in the comment section down below as well what is your favorite weapon what is your current go-to loadout when it comes to pvp and what does as any of this information change your mind about what you're planning to take into the meridian massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video massive thank you to the babylonian family as always for their continued support it really does help the channel out and with all that said and done that just leaves me to say keep yourself safe keep yourselves well and i'll see you all on our next video